All right, quick tutorial on how to replace the steering knuckle on a rear wheel drive Mercedes-Benz W204. Uh, this should be very similar for um, 207 E-Class Coupes. It's the same chassis. And it should also be pretty similar for uh, SLKs of the same years, 08 to 14 roughly, give or take. So we're gonna start by zipping off these five 17 millimeter lug bolts. All right, with your wheel off, you're gonna wanna get a jack stand for the brake caliper. And it's gonna be two 18 millimeter bolts, one there, then one at the top of the caliper. It's right there. And I like to use a wrench and a hammer to get these off. You can fit an impact there. You can try an impact if you can fit it, but I think a wrench and a hammer is a, maybe a little better for the ruining. Okay, brake caliper is out of the way. Just got it up on the jack stand. Careful not to uh, stress the brake line too much. Don't want the caliper to be hanging by the line. And then the two uh, 18 millimeter bolts are out. Next is gonna be I believe this is a T25 or T30 to get the brake rotor. All right, so the brake rotor is off. And so here's the knuckle, this cast piece back here. And um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna start with removing the outer tie rod. And I'm gonna try to, um, I'm gonna try to remove the knuckle without having to take apart the hub and the uh, brake dust shield. Um, but we'll see, I might have to take those off. So, yep, we're gonna do uh, outer tie rod first, and then we're gonna do the strut, which is two, I think they're E14s, and then one, this is a 21, let me get this in the light, 21 millimeter on this side, 21 millimeter nut, and a you hold it with a 16 millimeter, I think this is an E, it's a large, like an E18 or something, but a 16 millimeter works to hold it. 21 there, 16 there, we're gonna start with 21 millimeter on this and then a ball joint separator to break it loose. And then once the strut is disconnected, we'll get to the uh, two control arms. All right, the outer tie rod is out. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you either replace or carefully kind of R&R &R your tie rod because this style of ball joint separator can kind of tear up the boot. Uh, you can see a little bit. I gotta slide this top piece back into the boot and pull that yellow clip around it, but We'll do that later. Uh, now I'm gonna hit the two E14s in here. Uh, I don't know if you can see there's one here and then one on the other side. Uh, gonna remove those and then we'll make our way to the 21 and 16 right up here. So the two E14s back here are loosened and I actually had to put the outer tie rod back in just to hold the knuckle from turning uh, while I did that. And then up here, I was missing, it's actually a 14, just a regular 14 millimeter socket that you're gonna wanna hold um, that bolt with and then zip it off. Let's see if I can get it, zip it off with a, uh, a 21. I think I need both hands, but yep. All right, so I have, have the knuckle uh, moved out of the strut here. So be careful because your suspension arms might be under the bushings might be applying a lot of torsion. Um, so the whole knuckle wants to move up just because the suspension's at full droop, the strut's pushing them down. Um, so yeah, I might go ahead and I might unclip this bracket here and move the whole brake caliper to the front just because it's kind of, it's kind of yanking. Um, I'm gonna undo, there's a little 10 millimeter back here for the wheel speed sensor right there. Gonna undo that and then pull that out. Uh, that's going to go in the new knuckle. And then I think from there we should have room to access the two uh, control arm ball joints. There's one there and there's one behind. Um, those are also 21 millimeters. So probably going to need the ball joint separator on those as well. There it is. Okay, so I moved the uh, brake caliper and wheel speed sensor up front uh, where the line is not, not as stressed. Um, and I have the strut moved out of the way and you can see the two ball joints right here. So one points down, one points up. Here's a strut. Uh, keep in mind the strut is under some tension because of the strut bearing up top, the rubber strut bearing. And then these two control arms because of the preload on the bushings 
um, they want to move the whole knuckle up. So you're kind of fighting those two. Um, so yeah, from here, I'm just going to undo the 21s then ball joint separator on these two. And we should be able to get the knuckle out. All right, so there's one ball joint uh, separated. It's the upper control arm. And uh, now just gonna come around and get the, uh, the lower control arm ball joint separated. Actually wasn't so bad. All right, so here is the, um, well, the wheel well with no knuckle. You can see one ball joint comes up, the lower one. You see the front one comes in, points down, and then the strut holds it there. And then tie rod pushes and pulls here. Um, you can see that with the ball joint separator, these spring clips tend to come undone. So you're going to want to go through all your ball joints and make sure that you don't leave any open like that. Um, that'll really decrease the life. i uh, got to do that with the, the tie rod here uh, and the lower control arm there. So I'll go through that. <clears throat> and here is the old piece. Um, knuckle with hub and um, dust shield still attached and here's the new piece um, and I might do some quick measurements of them um, to try to try to see what changed um, yeah but we're going to replace that with this and getting a new hub and wheel bearings and a new uh, brake dust shield out of it too all right so new hub is just hanging on here uh, we have the uh, control arms holding the uh, knuckle on. Um, here's a little tip is that in order to get these seated, squeeze the ball joint into the uh, mating detail so that the tapered parts kind of sit together and create some friction. Then with while you're squeezing it in there, you can use an impact gun to drive the nut on because the nut has a locking feature. And if if the ball joint isn't seated in there all the way, then the locking feature will grab start twisting the ball joint and uh, twist your boot. Uh, but yeah, if you squeeze it in there, create enough friction, you can just turn that on and get it tightened down. And then you should be able to tighten these to spec without having a counter hold, uh, which is a nice feature. And yeah, it might be a smart idea to have new, um, new ball joint pieces, whether they're replaceable or not, uh, ready to go. I kind of mangled the outer tie rod here in the process and lost some of the grease. Managed to get it back together, but um, yeah, this is not going to last as long as it would have. Uh, you can see some of the marks there from the ball joint removal tool, but that's not a hard that's not a hard piece to replace uh, down the line. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and torque um, the control arms first, and then I might need to slide this in as well. Um, each of these, the two control arms and the ball joint, uh, they should all be the same size. They're all going to get uh, 50 Newton meters plus 60 degrees uh, for their torque value. And then the two E14s that go in here from the hub are going to get 100 Newton meters. And then this piece in here is going to get 100 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. So there are your torque values for the uh, new knuckle. Okay, so I have the outer tie rod and the two control arms bolted back up and they're torqued to 50 newton meters plus 60 degrees on each of the nuts uh, so now before you connect the knuckle up to the strut you're going to want to go ahead and move your brake caliper back to the normal side um, slide your clip in and then make sure that the wheel speed sensor is kind of laid over the brake caliper and then you will need to uh, slide it in and then tighten it down with the 10 millimeter, uh, slide it into the hole there before you uh, meet the strut to the knuckle. Uh, but once all this is in place, you can go ahead and wrangle the uh, knuckle up to the strut. It takes some force. You might have to put some body weight onto the knuckle in order to get the bushings to flex enough uh, because the strut's fully drooped. So um, yeah, just, be careful, try not to uh, tear anything or break anything as you kind of muscle it in place. Um, it's not too hard, you should be able to get it. Okay, so we have the strut back on. Um, everything's torqued. The two E14s torqued to 100 Newton meters. This guy up here torqued to 100 Newton meters 
plus 90 on the uh, nut. And uh, I think now I'll put the brake rotor back on, put the caliper back on, and we should be good to go. Okay, rotor's back on, just one T30. Um, just literally finger snug this because it's going to get captured with the wheel. Um, and this is just to retain the rotor. And uh, if you over tighten it, if your hubs are a little bit rusty uh, or something, uh, you could end up affecting the run out of the rotor. It's too tight here and it's it's sitting too far outboard here. So as it rotates, it'll be a little bit a little bit wavy. Uh, so yeah, just snug that up. And then we're going to slide the caliper back onto the new upright in two spots and then tighten the caliper bolts to 115 newton meters pretty big torque all right brake caliper is on and torqued uh, just those two 18s in the back there's one up top another one down below and wheels going back on and then lug nuts get uh i'm gonna say 100 foot pounds should be a nice reasonable number and then we'll see how it looks